I'd like to call the GCW subcommittee meeting to order scheduled for Tuesday, June 12, 2012, 7 p.m. in the Rice Conference Room. We have one agenda item, and the item is discuss and vote to enter into contract with Schmidt Equipment of North Oxford, Massachusetts under the state contract BCR 461 in the amount of $121,600 to purchase a new backhoe for the water department and to submit to council for ratification at its meeting on 6 18 12 to have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Mr. Just Clark. I'll start and then I'll, uh, I'll give the water department folks an opportunity. Uh, Tom Cutler and uh, Steve, Steve Blanchett. I was getting there. That's a Take you a while, right? Well, they, say, they have several Steves that work there. I was going to say Steve Donovan, but I know that wasn't. Uh, in terms of, th this has already been, the appropriation and the borrowing has already been authorized. Actually, I think this is just a, uh, a transfer of the, um, the retained earnings from the water department. So one of the things that we asked uh, the folks to do at Whitewater is to uh, go out and see what uh, piece of equipment would, would meet their needs. Uh, this uh, piece of equipment is off of the uh, state bid list. It does have some of the features. I think you guys have provided a list of the, the features that they have. Obviously, uh, because this is an enterprise uh, funded piece of equipment, it will primarily be used for um, water department purposes. If they have a water main that needs to be changed out or if there's a, uh, a service connection that has issues, they'll, they'll use this piece of equipment for that. Um, so in, in terms of the operation, the reason why it's funded for the water department and funded out of the paint earnings is that it's going to be primarily dedicated for the water department purposes. Which is, Chris, where did you say it was going to be funded out of? The water, water retained earnings. We already voted the appropriation, so this is just the, uh, the acquisition of the equipment. But it's funded from retained earnings. When did we vote? Uh, a month and a half ago. It's been yeah. a little bit. It wasn't a budget. All right. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, in terms of you know, Tom Daly, who is uh, unavailable this evening, has you know, it's a 25 year old piece of equipment, 16,000 hours, and it doesn't run uh, as safely as, as it would a newer piece of equipment. Also, they have put on some diff different attachments. They have included the thumb and the heavy duty bucket to be able to try to do some additional work. And we do have um, some trade in items that we're going to trade in to try to uh, diminish the cost. One thing on the trade-in, I, I did encourage Tom to trade in as much as he can. When we do those auctions, we get not very much. He's got a camera, so he's got a really nice. uh, the, the auction stuff is just not a good way to do it, so trade-in is, is by far the, the better approach to take. And then, I don't know if you guys want to say a few minutes. A few no, like Chris had pointed out, Tom, Tom Bailey had asked us, geez, well, why do we need this piece of equipment for safety reasons? Um, and, and Tom said, well, you know, explain, so explain more to me. So the machine, it does what we call, uh, it creeps. So basically when you're working in the trench and you've got a man down in the hole, if the machine's at idle, the bucket will move on its own. Uh, extremely dangerous for, for our employees, uh, especially if we were working at night. Uh, what's going to happen is, it, I hate to say it, and I hope it would never happen, is somebody could possibly get hurt. The um, machine is 25 years old. Uh, it does have 16,000 hours on it. It's not reliable. Um, keep in mind, we're also maintaining a 100-mile water system. Uh, extremely difficult to do, rather large in size. We're one of the larger systems uh, in the area. Uh, as you know, we recently, your folks recently passed uh, a backhoe for DPW, and you asked why two. Well, we have a lot of scheduling conflicts. You know, your DPW, sewer, and water department, we overlap each other many times, and many times we're stopping jobs to borrow from each other. So, with that said, uh, that's why we're requesting uh, the new machine. Anybody else? Council for Regis? Um, actually, I think um, that's okay. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah. Thank well, you. Yeah. Um, just to clarify, the the memo states that the funding is included in the water department annual budget. Or was this? I thought we did this part. Of, I thought we did this part of the capital budget when we did the capital budget. 
I know the findings are already been previously voted. Okay. But I, you know what I'll do is for Monday night I'll make sure I get the, uh, the previously voted, the previous uh, vote. That's not a problem. Thank you. Councilor mm -hmm. Nicole. Thank you. I just have a question. I'm kind of curious about this. The tires on this baby. Plus four grand. Is that for just the regular four tires on it, or is that for more than four so tires? We, we upgraded the tires um, so the machine will go over the road better. The tires that come on a backhoe are aggregate tires to dig into gravel banks. We do very minimal of that. We do most of our sh work in the street. So it's going to be better in the snow when we do snow removal, catch base and clean up for ice storms. These are special tires. Uh, and the tires on. will last a lot longer. And they stay on that on the thing the whole time? Yep. Like summer and winter? Yep. It's okay. a much better tire for a longer okay. Thank you. I was just curious about that. Thank you. Anybody else? Council Langevin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again. I do, I do believe, and I know this was in the budget. I remember voting on it, and I voted in favor of it. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I could have made a mistake, God forbid. I don't recall the DPW back home anywhere in the budget. Did I miss? Did I miss that? Yeah, the, the, on the highway that we did, uh, sixty thousand dollars. That one will be a July first. No, I know that. Borrowing authorization and sixty thousand from sewer. So we did that as part of capital. This was done before that. This was done, probably, it may have been the same night as we did the, uh, the budget or before. It's been in the queue. It's been in the queue for a little bit. No, I, 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 did, I do recall this one when we went over the budget. Line on it by line on because it did come up. And I know uh, Tom explained it and stuff like that. So uh -huh. very fresh in my mind. I just didn't recall the DPW one us reviewing that. I, 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 of course I remember the vote. I know the vote and stuff like that. But again, the the joys of being a counselor mm -hmm. and struggling um, with the times that we're in um, and the needs of the department and safety needs, you know, again people are great to criticize he spent this, he spent that, he did this, he did that. Um, I'm just trying to look for balance, some sort of a balance. Because we did, again, it's in our budget now, two police cruises. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. that's, I look at that as like what we do with the ambulance. Um, it's 24-7, we use it all the time. We purchase the street sweep. I voted for that and I'll, I'll stay with that. Thing I don't like about the street sweeper is on how they utilize the street sweeper because it, it almost is a slap in our face when they see him going behind each other. It's almost like a state gig, and I've seen that a lot this year in town. Like they're back of each other instead of one taking one section of town and the other taking another section of town. And let's get it done quicker. And I know they finished ahead of time because because it's seasonal. Um, and I. I'll hang my hat on that. I voted and supported it because, again, on the money wise, it was a smart thing to do because we were borrowing, we were doing ten thousand dollars, blah blah blah. Right. It's just you know, it's, if you're a taxpayer when you're out there, you see two sweepers going one behind each other. That's something the state does. I don't think the town does that too much. So you, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, just the appearance, for us. That's I, all. I don't I'm know saying. the operational. I see that a lot this year. I don't know other people. I don't know if it was rational. You know, the first half. You've got to go over it twice. Yeah. yeah so if it, maybe it's more efficient if you can go twice and, and, and stop. And I don't know, but on it the is is outside, we talked about it as a group, and I think one of the questions we sent is we saw the street sweepers out there. How come there's two? And exactly to your point, is they have to make two passes. A wind row is left from the first one. So instead of the first one coming back and making a second pass, they're just doing it all at once, which let them finish fast. But you know what I'm trying to say. But I, yeah, I see your point. Yes. Yeah. It might go, I yeah. look at the mile winter, it was very mile winter, so yeah. what did we actually put down? Mm -hmm. I'm just saying as a taxpayer, mm -hmm. um, hey, you know, you get elected to make tough decisions and the general public, public out there 
really doesn't understand what we do and why we do it, and you, you try to balance. But the bottom line is our tax rates have been going up, and our water rate been going. Up. So I'm 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 not gonna lie, I'm struggling with this. I really am struggling with it because it looks like there's a big list and times are tough. But see, well, next year and next year is is Chris, next year is it gonna be any better? No. <laughs> yeah, but I I look at it as. I guess I look at it a little bit differently. We have $200 million worth of building assets in this community. We have, we're doing the property and casualty insurance tomorrow night, so I happen to have some of these on my head. We have 138 pieces of equipment. And what you just rattle off, you know, in the four years I've been here, maybe we've changed out 10, 12 out of 138. So, you know, I, I know that you want to make sure, and, and certainly I want to make sure that we get the best value you can. But, you know, I had a guy that, that used to work for me that said, you know, everything has a useful life. And when you're putting in five grand a year, which I think is what the, the last year's maintenance cost was, you really have to ask yourself, you know, are we throwing good money after bad? And, you know, I've had several vehicles over the years, and, you know, once things start to get to a certain point, everything falls apart and you try to reach that where you want to catch it before you're investing too much money each year so you know to have 138 vehicles and to change out 10 to 12 in four years and to be honest when ken was here to my amazement I mean, I, these are really the first few dpw vehicles that we've changed out in the last year because i think the first two years or three years i was here with ken he asked for three dump bodies. That was it. So, you know, the, the fleet is old. The fleet needs to be upgraded. You know, my job is that, you know, I'm not going to just queue everything up and try to do one massive thing. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be conservative and try to make sure that we get what we need and get pieces that actually work. You know, Tom was frustrated because he wanted one extra piece that I didn't think he needed, so we told him. So, you know, this isn't, this isn't kid in the candy store time, but this is that we've been able to manage our water budget effectively, we've been able to manage the sewer budget effectively. Water rates have been zero for the last two years, and we've run a surplus. All we're doing is, I think by the same token, I think it's a slap in the face to, to rate payers to keep running surplus after surplus each year. And if we can take some of the surplus, which is what we've done intentionally, taking a million dollars worth of the water surplus for this past year and 400,000 in the sewer surplus and try to make sure that we try to keep pace. Because what happens is, like what I inherited when I came, you know, there were project after project that was just stuff that, and it was a mindset, and a mindset that I guess I understand being a municipal government, but it's not a mindset that we should adopt, that wait until things break wait until DEP comes in and says, do it or else, or do you just do it proactively, consciously, and to do it before bigger costs are incurred. So I think, you know, we have the resources. Some of the reason for the timing and the reason why I know we got this is that, and, and uh, Council of just will understand that, we have retained earnings that come July 1st. We're not gonna have access to that money. So we had to make sure that we locked in what we could uh, and make sure that we had a, a spending pattern that we use the available resources to meet some of the, the capital needs that we have. But I think what you're starting to see is that we are going to be more serious with capital because quite honestly, you know, we can't go out and do new schools when two schools fail. You know, I mean, $76 million, just waiting for things to get really bad it's just not, it's just not good business. So, you know, we are trying, and I appreciate Tom's efforts, and Tom knows, you know, we're not just, we're not just gonna throw money at things, we're gonna do things deliberately. But I think certainly backhoes are frontline pieces of equipment, yeah. are mm -hmm. things I, that we use all the time. So I'd like to throw one thing out there, not to interrupt you, Chris, but that is the machine that was right up in front during the tornado, and it broke. Right. Halfway through. It was broken. Yeah. Broke down. You couldn't use it after that. Yeah. 
I can't argue your point, Chris. I really <laughs> I can't because I do understand what's DPW and what people have for equipment. I don't even have a good comeback on that. I really don't. Um, if the taxpayers out there think that I'm not doing a good job because of, I'm poorly voting on things just to spend money, then I guess they'll get rid of it. Because I think you know, the one question that you have to say to them is, what car lasts forever? Right, no. I mean, what piece of equipment lasts forever? I mean, you know, in all seriousness, people like to do campaign stuff. You know, oh, well, just wait another year, wait another year, wait another year. You know, at some point, none of us sitting here would have the same car we had in high school. Right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> 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 I mean, you, you have to update. And you know, 25 years later, surprise, it's time to update. You know, and so I, I just, I can't, I, I really can't argue with that. I don't even. And I don't. I can't. I can't. It's not like a debate. That's why right. I just, I just trying to. What I do is, you know, fuel. It's funny because yeah, you know, I used to get, I got calls. And they said, why does, the, why does this snowplow truck go up and down my street four or five times? And then I went out one year, and I hadn't gone out ever with DPW guys. And one winter, a couple years ago, I went out, and the driver goes to me. He goes, Chris, the roadway is 24 feet wide. My plow blade's eight feet. There you go. How many times do I have to go over the road to clear it? And then he goes, if it snows two inches every two hours, every two inches I got to clear it. So then, you know, do the math. I mean, yeah, you could see a truck going by your house eight or nine times because there's that much snow and there's that much road right with. But I think, to some degree, I think that's what we need to do as public officials, make sure that when people say, geez, how, you know, why would you do that? Take the opportunity, educate them, you know? Do you have the same car you had when you were in high school? You know, to say that to them. Not to be, not to be smart, but just to open people up to that. They're a business. We have consumables that need to be turned over. I, I, I said it last week, at last week's meeting, so I told you, I mean, if some of the public had their way, they'd take the, that pumper that's up on the, up on the, the council chambers and back it into the fire station to <laughs> lose it. Really, because, I mean, we're refurbishing a, a 30-year-old engine right now that sooner or later, you, you just, I'm, I, I ask you every meeting on how much did you spend in this equipment what was your repairs? That's my biggest thing. Because when, that, that, when I go for capital, when I go for capital, I have to, I have to say that, you know. So I don't want to throw money away. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, I'm all set. Thank you. Um, my whole thing is this: all the years that I was on council prior, I was never on a DPW subcommittee, and this is my first year actually ever. Um, Kathy put me on DPW. And it's easy for us, I think, to say as counselors, well, the fire department needs this, we never question it. The police department needs cruises, we never question it. Why? Because they're in their cruiser 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We need ambulance, you know, top line, we've got to make sure they run, it's public safety. Well, now that I'm on this subcommittee and I'm educated about the equipment, I didn't realize we had equipment at DPW that's 25, 30 years old. I don't want to spend eight to ten thousand dollars a year on repair. So now that I have the knowledge and the education, I think you guys have been put on the back burner for a number of years. You know, and I appreciate everything, the mechanics that we have, and everything that all the employees have done to maintain the equipment, but by the same token, you, you can't be driving an antique in 1950 when you have equipment that's, you know, you guys, it's heavy duty equipment. As far as the warranty, which one do we select? There's four listed here, but I don't know which one. Select the basic. Select the basic. It's just the basic. Just the basic? Yeah. Which is the two year? Or, or one the one year that's on the front page. Yeah, one year. One year. Just the so one. We're not going okay. to no. entertain those four options. Either. No, no. Okay, that's just just wondering. Chairman Paul. Thank you, um, Councillor Marcucci did did say a lot of what I wanted to say. But the one thing that I I, uh, I have never forgotten, and it was invaluable. And I, you know, I'm going to make an effort. I'm going to call 
town this week, and we're going to make arrangements so that as soon as the, the, the uh, dust settles with the uh, election and everything, I am going to request that we, we as a council, and unless, you know, your house is on fire, no, no excuses, we're going to take a tour. When I was first elected on council in 2005, Hamer Clark took me on a tour. And at that time, he pretty much it made me feel like this was something that all councilors thought was this tour. And he took me into the DPW facility, which was still on Pleasant Street at the time. And I was amazed. There were pieces of equipment there that are only a couple of years younger than I. And I'm in my late 50s. And we still use those pieces of equipment. There was, until Tom Daly came, nobody was really advocating to replace them. We, legit, we just continued to repair them. And it's a good thing that we have a very gifted mechanic, but it's also a bad thing, because he can continue to take chewing gum and fix things, and one of these days, somebody's going to get killed, let alone hurt. And that's where I live. I, I know this is a lot of money, and that, that your point is well taken. Until you were involved in DPW subcommittee, it's very difficult to make, for it to make sense that this kind of money has to be spent. So it's even worse for the, ta for the town's people because they're not, I mean, Evelyn comes to all the subcommittee meetings. She's not a counselor, but she's fully educated into what we, what we do. Most people on the street don't understand that. And if you watched this, the campaign debates over the weekend, you heard this, the, these issues coming up over and over again. But that's cut and dry. If any one of those people who's never been on council gets on council, you'll see how fast their, their tune is going to change once they realize that this stuff isn't frivolous. It's not, wouldn't it be nice? It's, I'm not going to somebody's funeral because a backhoe creeped up on him while he was in a ditch. And, I mean, I don't think you're exaggerating when you say no. the thing is more. I, I'll tell you, I was surprised yeah, because it happened to be yeah. one time that I was in the ditch working with the guys, and I uh, know yeah. Steve had pointed out, watch, watch the backhoe bucket yeah. because it doesn't move, and I saw it moving. I said, you got to be kidding. Yeah. I you mean, know, that's, that, we that's can't have some that. serious safety issue. That's 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 definitely you know. And you that's have a number of pieces active. that are definitely yes. not safety compliant. No doubt. So, you know, we're going to start with these pieces. They are frontline pieces. You guys use these pieces all the time, um, or enough. And I don't have a problem selling this on Monday night, if, or, or, you know, Mr. Clark, or, or anybody else that wants to come forward. Not because we want to have this, and no matter what, it's because the town needs this stuff. And I think the other side of the coin is our people, our taxpayers, need to understand clearly why we need this stuff. And maybe if we can work harder at educating them when these votes come up, it will be a, a less of a bitter pill for them to have to swallow. I'm supporting this. There's no question about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there's been comments about, you know, why do we need one for highway sewer and why do we need one for water? Um, and, I mean, Tom did say, you know, they have a water main break and there's, I don't know, a sewer break and something else going on, it's snowing, I mean, we've got a problem. Um, that's the other point I want to make, too. Um, Councilor Marcucci mentioned, you know, 24-7, the cruisers, they're running 24-7, I don't know if they're being used 24-7, but um, they're, they're on. Um, but the... Um, Gentlemen, because we do don't have any ladies in the DPW, we'll have to change that. Um, do. <laughs> we do. Yeah. Well, you know, let's, yeah, we need some drive. Um, <laughs> no, I've hired two women for the fire department. I know you DPW. have. I know you have. I don't have much opportunity at DPW. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Um, but um, you know, there when we have a snow event, these guys are in those trucks 48 hours straight. You know what? And when you're driving in a truck that's 40 years old, no heat, no, you know, no nothing. You have to roll down the window, right, Mom, so that the windows don't fog up on you, because that's not working either. I mean, would you want to do that? I wouldn't want to do that. Um, and plus, the, the need, if we didn't 
you know, get one, a new one last week. We got a new one last week for the sewer department. I said maybe we could, you know, exchange, borrow, and uh, Mr. Daly said, well, no, they'll fight. You people will fight. Well, that's what he said yeah. at the meeting, all right? He said, well, I said, no, no. There's a lot of scheduling conflicts because you do have three and four departments using one piece of equipment. So during and the that, 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 piece, that piece of equipment, I heard, doesn't get all that, all that much use. They're running every day. Mm -hmm. Our backhoe is running every day. Right now, Conrad, we've got 76 days to do because of the meter program. Yeah. We can't get on the services. We can't shut them off. So I got to do 76 digs with backhoes in the next month or two. Many That's times we're putting customers' appointments off because we don't have the equipment because we're not. Not counting all that other stuff. Right. The machines constantly run. How many backhoes do we have in the system? Two. Two. Two big ones. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Only two. That's right. right. Having just one of anything is never. And then when you say you get, uh, you got to put pipes in and stuff. Yeah. You guys contract out a lot. Not for the emergency repairs. Uh, anything new, like a subdivision right. or something yeah. like that, yeah. West Street was all contracted out. Yeah. Never used the back yeah. That was a big job. Right. That was a big job. Well, we're buying you a big piece of equipment. We hope to use it more. I I'm going to stick with land council arrangements, you know, think of the tax I'm made. voting in favor of it. That's fine. I'm going to. I'm still sticking to stick my gun. You know, at Chris's point, you got to have redundancy. You, you can't rely on one machine. And I've got to bit another tornado comes through here, and, and you have one machine, and it breaks. Chances you got to take. Chances, yep. I, I, you know, I hope yeah. I'm not offending anybody. No. You know, it's just that I'm thinking of the tax base. Yep. They, everybody, everybody's, they call on me because it's on the internet. It's they're average. going for a second, you know, backhoe. And, and they're, Things coming, the calls coming in aren't too good. Mm -hmm. Like, like, was it David that said they don't know what's, you know, but I'm gonna stick with, you know, work for the taxpayers myself. No? Thank you, Councillor. They sneak in the back door with the sewer, water and sewer. Years ago, we paid taxes, water and sewer came in it. They separated it. It's a tax. What it's a, it's a, with all due respect, Mr. Rate. Chairman, it's it's a it's a rate. You have the ability to conserve. If you don't like the rate that you pay for those for water and sewer, then then conserve. Use less. You have that ability to you do that. You don't even have to use the water. Then they still charge you. There's a business down here on East Main Street that hasn't used the water. The building's been shut off, and they still get a water bill of a a hundred and something dollars a month, I believe. Because it's an active line to the yeah, water line. Line. That's why. Mm -hmm. You can disconnect it. I mean, you can get out of the street and do a physical. Thank you. I, I just, uh, I keep, I mean, I've been thinking about this all day because I knew this was going to be, it, it's contentious. And I can understand why it's contentious. Between this one and the other one, we're looking at, what, $300,000 worth of backhoe, two backhoes. But I can assure you, somebody gets run over by a, a, a moving backhoe, $300,000 $300, would be nice compared to what it would cost between if they even survived suing us, insurance rates going through the roof. I mean, I hate to put it in terms of money, but being an insurance person, that's where I have to go. I can't hold the hand of every person who has an accident. I have to think about the cash. And I can assure you, this, we, I wouldn't want, I mean, we've been, we've been really lucky that somebody hasn't been seriously injured by some of this equipment. And again, I can't stress enough the fact that you've got to see this stuff to believe it. This piece of equipment that they've got a picture of over here, the one that we're replacing, this thing actually looks beautiful compared to some of the stuff that's, that they have. That looks great compared to some of the pieces of equipment I've seen in the DPW garage. I don't even know how they can drive that stuff. Like Pam said, you got to have the windows open. I mean, it's not for the faint of heart, you know. Granted, it's a job, and, and they do the job and everything. But somebody gets hurt, then everybody's going to be throwing their hands up in the air and going, "Oh my God, I'm tired of being on the on the reactive end of it." We need to be smarter than that. We need to plan before crap happens to us, and. You know, if we don't do this, and that pe that backhoe were to go out again and break, 
at a time when it was really, really needed, we could, we could really, really, really see some serious costs coming in, and $161,000, or whatever this is, $121,000, would be a drop in the bucket, and that's not a punt. Um, again, I... Uh Discussion, all in favor? Opposed? I'm the lone star. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor. Second.